there, Sonia here from A Rainbow of Balloons. Welcome to this week's balloon twisting tutorial which is on how to make this rather cute little ladybug balloon. Now I'm actually going to do this video in two parts. This week we're going to explore just how to do this cute little ladybug on top and then next week the flower. So uh, and depending on your mood or the line or whoever you're creating it for you might just do the sweet little ladybug by itself uh, or even the flower and both are generally quick and easy to do on their own and just with a little extra time you can put them together and create something even a bit more special it even looks lovely if you were to go ahead and put it on a headband but we're not going to do that this week um, or even next for that matter but let's go ahead and look at how to do this cute little ladybug okay so to do this one, what you're going to need is two five inch rounds. Now, uh, Qualtex put out this very cute uh, ladybug printed round. It is wonderful, of course, for ladybugs. But if you don't have them, um, or like me, sometimes you run out, just grab any color five inch round and you can add in the markings yourself. Now, this is quite a simple design and I think a lot of the magic comes from the artwork that we're going to add on to it at the end. So uh, watch along and see how we do that. Okay so I'm going to start off with the five inch uh, spotty round. Just inflating it with my agenda to the side there. Now I've inflated it to, um, if you can see there, uh, it's just approximately my whole hand width so from here to here. What we're going to do when we tie the nozzle is Tie it off a bit closer to the um, actual nozzle end. Leave yourself a little bit of play room there because what we're going to do next is give it a bit of a squish and push the air back towards the knot. Twist it off. Um, what we've got there is approximately uh, one and a half inches um, bubble, uh, which would be approximately five, four. Well, no, just under five centimeters. <laughs> so, mine's just coming down. Right. And then, basically, doing a pinch twist here. So we're going to take the knot here and introduce it into the twist. Put that knot on the other side. Of the twist. See how it's there, and not um, just the. And between the nozzle and the knot because that knot's going to help lock it in a little bit in place. I normally like to stick it in my fingers there as I work on the next bit. Now oh with the five inch round we just want to put in a small amount of air to it. Y you can go a bit bigger if you choose to but I generally try to keep it quite small. I'm going to tie it off and I'm going to split it in two and using that knot there to help me uh, keep those two bubbles separate then I'm going to introduce it into the join of uh, the printed round. So that's approximately um, the air split in the two sides. And then we're going to introduce it into the end of our ladybug balloon. Lock it in place by even twisting those at that split white round on itself to help make sure it's going nowhere. Okay, so here we have the ladybug head, body, and eyes without the features yet. So the only thing missing is the antenna, which we're going to go ahead to add now. So when I'm preparing this here and now, I'm going to turn that 260 a bit to help encourage the air to want to stay in that end. I'm going to go ahead to inflate the entirety of the 260 and then let out most of the air in order to create the two uh, little bobbles on the end of the ladybug. So uh, I'm going to use my legenda to inflate it all the way. Once it's there, holding on to the nozzle end, don't let it go. To twist off a bubble uh, approximately five centimeters or two uh, inches long. And then that uh, those twisters are, uh, are a bit of security to help ensure air stays in that end as I let air out the opposite. Ooh, 
I'm gonna let that bit go. Oh, <laughs> you can see that the air is starting to escape back to that way and that can and will happen and to encourage it back that way. I'm not going to fuss too much until right at the very end because it might escape once more. So I'll focus on letting more air out. So <laughs> right now most of the air has escaped back so it seemed a bit futile that additional effort at the beginning. However, sometimes it does stay there. I've got the air conditioner on in my room and the balloon tends to behave a little bit differently as to if I was outside in the field as it were creating designs. Anyway, so to get that air back to that side I'm going to twist that remaining bubble in two, getting it to approximately an equal size and then pushing it along here. It's going to capture more of that air along the way so the size of the bubble may change. That's why uh, often I'll it for the sake of symmetry. I might keep more air in this side as opposed to this one. So I just uh, use a squishing uh, moving motion to get it back. Keep in mind the air may automatically want to go back to its mate at the beginning there. So you're going to want to try and um, I guess you see the air doesn't want to go back that way. Oh, and see with one push there, it went to that uh, bit we stretched earlier. So that's where doing that little step may come into its own. The air can uh, naturally be forced to go that way a bit better. Anyway, to get to this point, I tie this in half. So this does two things. It gives me a halfway anchor point, I guess, but it also ensures that any extra fiddling I do won't cause that air to escape back to the other side. So tying it in two I feel is important. Now we're going to go ahead to introduce it into the body and to do that we've got a, a great indicator of our halfway point by this knot. So we're going to rest it on top here, uh, or sorry underneath in the centre and then give it a good pull and twist it around, pull it once again into the top. So there's that cute little fella. Now for the sake of symmetry, if it's important to you, because uh, time permitting it's important to me too, I might squish this air back a little bit. Tie them up. So it looks more like the other side. If you want to take that a step further, make sure that those knots are nice and secure because you can then use your scissors to remove that excess. That way they both look samesies and uh, you might feel a bit better about it. That's if you get truly uh, pedantic, which um, yeah, okay, sometimes that's me. Anyhow, so now we're going to get ready to do the artwork. Um, normally I grab a pink or a red to add some cheeks to my little bug. And I'm going to do that by a couple of little ovals on here. Now because pinks aren't always the best choice on a red, it doesn't show up for the best. But um, the pink was the closest marker to me today and you can still see it and if it's important to a child to um, to really see it they'll tell you they'll say hey you can't see that so hey grab your red marker and give it another go anyhow well we're going to give it a cute little smile right in the center of those cheeks that you really can't see I like to do a bit of a U so a simple sweet innocent smile now uh, where the artwork comes into its own is for the eyes so to do the very cutesy thing what we're going to do is draw three circles two, three. So as I've drawn them, um, focusing on trying to get the white part to be circular, not so much the outline if you know what I mean. So where you start and finish with your marker for each circle can cause your um, white loop uh, or white shine of the eye that we've created to be a bit distorted. And if it does, that's okay. But I'm just pointing out uh, if you uh, tend to be a perfectionist about these kind of things, something to be aware of. 
Now I'm going to draw a bigger circle around all these to connect the three and then color it in. And it's basically just connecting in those gap areas and we're just going to go ahead to fill in those uh, gaps created by our last bit of marker work. And I did choose to uh, extend that a bit as well. Um, so whatever your aesthetic is, I'm feeling that's not entirely circle. So I'm going to go in and correct that and at the same time add the eyelashes and the eyebrow. So that's one side. I'm going to go ahead to repeat the process on the other. All right. Oh, and there we have our cute little ladybug. So as I mentioned, you can introduce it onto a flower, like this one here, to get this really cute uh, iteration of the ladybug, so the ladybug on the flower. Now, um, if you happen to be one of the subscribers from my old channel, welcome, glad to see you here. If you're uh, a new watcher uh, or a current subscriber, it's great to have you along to see uh, the balloons that I'm creating for you. Now, uh, if you have any requests for any balloon tutorials, make sure to pop them in the comments below and um, maybe let me know if you were a previous subscriber um, or if you are a new one to the uh, Rainbow Balloons video tutorials. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video today and I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> Cheerio!